Okay. So everyone that finished their theme assignment on Friday, like you were supposed to, or over the weekend, it has been graded and put into power school. I tried to make comments on it. So um, feel free to check that out and see how you did on the theme assignment. Connor. Sweet. I'm not updating it until the end of the week. Why would I update it now? And then update it again in two days. That leads into my next point. Remember, this is the final, final week of the third nine weeks. That means if you have any later missing assignments, get them done. That also means you can't have any later missing assignments this week. Because after Thursday at 2.35, I'm not taking anything. Okay? So, that means you have to finish work on time this week. You have till Thursday at 2.35 to get those AR points. I'm not going to update them again until Thursday because I don't want to update them today and then update them again on Thursday in power school because that takes a lot of time and I normally only do it once a week. So um, I will do it Thursday evening. I won't do it Thursday right after school because I have ASAP, but I will do it Thursday evening. Um, also, because it's the final week of the nine weeks and we've been working oh so hard and have, you know, just been doing all types of stuff. Um, your final reading assignment is going to be assigned today. It is due on Thursday. We're not going to take the test or the quiz because Mrs. Knaifa doesn't want to. We're just going to work on the story, do a lot of questions together. But on Thursday, we are taking the star test. Okay? That way you guys can get your new ZPD. But then you guys can get your new ZPD. So, but we're not taking the five-question quiz or the ten-question test this week. So, go us. In replace, you have to take the star test. But then you get your new ZPD. So, it's okay. Um, so anyways, we're going to get started. Our story this week is about um, parrots. So it's a fun story. But it is Monday, which means, boys and girls, it is Monday, which means we have a suffix to learn, and we have a root to learn, and we have new vocabulary to learn as well. Okay? Yeah, I already said your last assignment for the nine weeks. I also shouldn't be able to see your nose, Connor. So, Mrs. Siddick's class, I don't need to hear any comments. Connor, you're sitting awfully close to Ethan. Let's move your desk this way. Stop being on top of him. So, we have a root. Someone remind me where a root goes. Anywhere. A root can go at the beginning, it can go in the middle, it can go at the end, it can go anywhere. So we have one root and one suffix. So our root, oh my goodness, this is the final time I'm going to look in this direction, okay? I cannot hear myself think when all I'm hearing is you chit-chatting. So, we have the root bene, B-E-N-E, -E, and that could go anywhere. And I feel like none of these words are that um, easy to find, except for Mark just said one. So, one word that has B-E-N-E -E would be beneficial or benefit or benevolent. Or benefactor. This is not my favorite root in the world. It's like world, because I feel like we don't normally use these words every single day. But there's beneficent, beneficial, benefit, benevolent, benefactor, benedictation, all of those. And this is a Latin root, fun fact. And it means dun, 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 the meaning of it as well. Fun fact. And remember, not all words follow the pattern, but bene, B-E-N-E, -E means well, okay? And then our next one, it has the suffix U-R-E. U-R-E. So when Mrs. Kripal was looking this up, I found, um, I gotta make sure I spell these big old words right, architecture, U-R-E. And then I found horticulture, which has to do with flowers. Architecture obviously has to do with architects, like buildings and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Lobster. So say that again. Lobster. Is that a word? 
Anyways, I don't know how to spell nectarine. Um, literature, that's a good one that Mark said. I don't know how to spell that, U-R-E, but it ends in U-R-E, literature. But the suffix literature, or the suffix literature, yeah. I was pointing at Ethan, but I'll come to you next. Ethan. What? I don't know if that's how you spell it. Okay, agriculture. Olivia. Okay. All right, so fun fact, we have enough words. We have agriculture, horticulture, architecture, lecture, literature, and the suffix U-R-E means... <laughs> hey, Connor, do you have recess today? Yeah. Okay, well, you officially owe me five minutes of it, sir. Okay. So URE means indicating act, process, or result. So in literature, you're practicing literature. In horticulture, you're practicing things with, well, flowers, architecture. It is the act of architect. These aren't my favorite ones, but like I said, we're learning them to learn them. It's on our list, but we're not going to be tested on them this week because we're not taking a test this week, Mr. Mark. Does cure count? Because C is technically a word. Yes, I think so. <gasps> yes! All right. So, root, B-E-N, suffix, U-R-E. We're not going to be tested over it because no test this week. Yay! But we do have lots of new vocab words this week. We have seven, I think. So, we're going to go over our seven words. You do have vocabulary homework. Because vocabulary homework makes the world go round. All right. And I feel like some of our words we might know, and then some of them are a little bit harder. So our first word is flight. What does flight mean, Dylan? It's the act of flying. But yes, you're in the air flying. So flight is the act of flying through the air. So birds take flight. Planes take flight, butterflies take flight, insects take flight. All different things can be in flight. So flight is the act of flying through the air. Landon. Okay, well, they used to, but not anymore because they're extinct. So, boys and girls, Ethan, face forward. So a sentence could be, we stood at the water's edge and watched the bird take flight. Okay, flight. That's one we've probably all heard before and we all understand. Our next one is toil, T-O-I-L. And this is a verb. This is not a word that we use all the time. Anyone, it does have a very short definition. Does anyone know what toil means? I'm going to read you a sentence and see if that helps, okay? The worker had to toil to collect all of the vegetables. Jaden? It does not mean hurry. Landon? Nope. Matthew? Yes, it means work. To toil is to work, okay? So if I said, all right, we're going to toil on our grammar homework now, it means to work on it, okay? So the worker had to toil to collect all the vegetables. It means to work to collect all the vegetables. Toil just means to work. Fun word for work. We should use this word more. Make us sound super smart. Our next word is an adjective, and it is merchant. Merchant. This picture might help you. What is a merchant, Bryden? So, um... A merchant is a person that sells. I want us to focus more on this one, specifically with this lovely ship. With the lovely ship. The ship's going to help us. Matthew? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so a merchant ship, that's the one we're going to be talking about in our story, carries products to sell. And usually it's from country to country, okay? So we don't see these ships because we don't live by an ocean. But in other places like Florida or somewhere on the coast where there's an ocean, you see giant ships and they're carrying all of these train cars full of stuff to sell. And it's a merchant ship. It's a ship that is literally designed to carry stuff to sell. Okay. They take it from one place to another. So sometimes things on merchant ships are going to be super heavy that aren't going to be able to fly as well because not all things are shipped from country to country in a boat or ship. Uh -huh. um, but lots of times they do it in the airplane, but it depends on the product and the weight of the product and stuff. Okay. So depending on what the product is makes a difference. Now this next one we probably know it is port. What is a port? What is a fort, Abriel? A wall. That is definitely part of it. What's the other part of it? Fort. What's the other part, Dylan? It's like a base. Yeah, a base. So it's a fort is normally a strong building, usually protected by guards and a wall. It's like the base where someone is going to be protected at, okay? So a fort, strong building. It's normally protected by something. It's where you guys like, you know, hold down the fort, get it? That's a, you know, that's a expression. It's where you stay safe. So a sentence could be, we toured the old stone fort while we were on vacation. So. Why would someone need a fort? Olivia? To hide out. To hide out? Why? In case okay. To hide out in case something happens. Why else might someone need a fort, Bryden? Yeah, to hang out. Like I'm, You guys are still kids, but you know, it's fun to build a fort when you're a kid and you got a nice spot to hang out, to be protected. Military sometimes will have a fort. Maybe you have a fort to take advantage of something in a military. You know, you, it's nice and camouflaged. People don't know you're there. All those things. Hands down. So fort, we know what that is. Our next one is jabbing. What does jabbing mean? And this picture is probably helpful jabbing what does jabbing mean someone i haven't talked to who have i not talked to amia connor Haley, kaden blake what does jabby mean one of you kaden yeah if you're jabbing something you're poking it quickly with great deal of power so if i'm jabbing at someone that means i'm poking them really hard and really fast okay so a sentence could be my sister began jabbing me to get my attention okay not nice don't be jabbing people just say their name you know hey give them a little wave hey but jabbing means poking hard quickly and uh with a lot of power all right our next word is captivity what does captivity mean mia Okay, so stayed in the area, you're on the right track. So if something is kept in captivity, it is held in a place and cannot get out. So think of animals at the zoo. They are all in captivity. They can't just leave the zoo if they felt like it, okay? Um, yeah. Hey, can you stop making that noise, Jaden? Connor, I don't know what you're doing back there, but it's not what you should be doing. So if something is held captive, it is held in a place where it cannot get out. That is called captivity. But sometimes the zoo isn't all bad. Lots of times zoos take in animals so they can repopulate and they can go back in the wild. So just because they're in captivity doesn't mean it's the worst thing on earth, just for the record. Zoos do help um, people, not people, but species repopulate. So um, the aquarium holds many types of marine life in captivity. Okay, it means you keep it and can't get out. Like if you had a bird at home, or if you have, I don't know, a hermit crab or a tor tortoise or turtle or whatever, it might be in a cage. It's technically in captivity. It can't just roll out whenever it wants, okay? Everyone understand what captivity means? That's probably another one we might have heard in the past. All right, our final one is a word we've definitely all heard before. The picture does a good job explaining it, kind of. Aggressive. This is an adjective, Blake. Yeah, if someone...
someone or something like an animal is aggressive, he or she is often angry and ready to attack. Okay. So an aggressive dog might, you know, be showing its teeth, be growling, having its hair stand up, etc. Landon. Yeah, I just, I was just giving an example of aggression. There's all different types of aggression. People can be aggressive. You know, snakes can be aggressive. All different things can be aggressive. Except for Mrs. Knifel. I don't really think I'm aggressive, but I don't know. Okay, we're going to go through these again really quick, and then we're going to go over your homework. No, I lied. We're going to go through these together. We're going to go over the prepare to read page. Then we're going to go over your homework, and you'll have the rest of the time to do your homework. So we'll go over your homework in a little bit. But Remember, flight is the act of flying through the air. That is one we have all heard. That one should be a simple, simple one. Toil, to toil is to work. Later, you guys are going to toil. Hey, why are we opening up our computers? I didn't ask anyone to open up our computers yet. Later, you guys are going to toil on your vocabulary homework. See that? Yep, funny. <laughs> Next is merchant. And we were talking about a, ship, a merchant ship specifically. A merchant ship? carries products to sell usually to another country so country to country fort a fort is a strong building usually protected by guards and a wall another where where we said for it's like home base would be a fort jabbing if you are jabbing someone you are poking it jabbing something you are poking it quickly with a great deal of power that is a verb it is something that you do our next one is captivity if something or someone is kept in captivity, it is held in a place and cannot get out. Like if you're ever mad at your parents and you're grounded to your bedroom, you could be like, oh, you guys are keeping me in captivity. So we probably shouldn't say that, but you know, same thing. And then our last one was aggressive, which is an adjective, a descriptive word. If someone is aggressive or something, he or she is often angry and ready to attack. Dun, 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 dun. Are there any questions on these seven words? If not, I want you to go to HMH and we're gonna read over our prepare to read page together. Yes. Quickly. The um, title is Parrots over Puerto Rico or something like that. Boys and girls. Parrots over Puerto Rico, you need to go to the prepare to read page, please. Everyone needs to be there. Fun fact, I really like the illustrations in this book. So um, we're going to take a look at those um, probably after the prepare to read page. We're just going to talk about them. But I do really like the illustrations in this story. Because technically they're collages. They're not illustrations. So can someone explain to me what a collage is? I'm kind of skipping forward, but what is a collage, Mia? That's a group of pictures or paper and you like glue them on top of each other and it makes a design. Um, so that is technically what all of our pictures are. It's painted or colored paper cut out into shapes and designs glued on top of each other to make another shape or design. So I don't know, I just think our illustrations, well, technically collages are really cool. But the genre study of the week, it's informational text. What is informational text in your own words? Someone remind me. What does informational text mean, Ethan? It's informing you about something, which makes it what? Fiction or nonfiction? Nonfiction, it's giving us facts about a topic. And if it's giving us facts, that means they're real. They're not going to give us fake facts about a topic. So our informational text is going to give us actual real facts about a topic, which makes it nonfiction. I want everyone to look at the first bullet point. It says, authors of informational text may organize ideas by stating a problem and explaining the solution. They may also present ideas in sequential or chronological order to help readers know when events happen and how they're connected. So we know what problem solution is, right? Problem, Mrs. Kneifel keeps on hearing a bouncing on someone's desk. Solution, Mrs. Kneifel's going to ask the student to stop. Thank you. So anyways, problem solution, we know what that is. Someone explain to me slash remind me what is chronological or sequential order. We go over this like every single week. I should see every single hand up. What is chronological slash sequential order, Olivia? Um, so 
Right. So sequential order tells us the events that things happened. It's not going to say the last thing that happened first. It's going to say the first thing that happened first. Then it's going to say the second, then the third, then the fourth, and so on. It tells us in order to help us understand how the events happened. And then it also says informational text authors may include narrative elements to help readers relate to the topic's text. Use content area words that are specific to the topic. We've talked about content area words before, like words that are super specific to math or words that are specific to social studies. In the Wild West, we had a ton of content specific words to social studies. This one's about parrots. So I'm going to say it's going to be more content specific to science because it's going to be about birds, but it could also be about other countries because it's talking about Puerto Rico, which um, is owned by the United States, but is not part of the 50 states. So, um, Anyways, it is going to also have some social studies specific words. So I just want you guys to, the text is called Pirates, not Pirates, sorry. I'm going to make that mistake like 10 times. The text is called Pirates over Puerto Rico. Do we know anything about Pirates at this moment? Yeah. What is something that anyone knows about a parrot at this moment? Olivia. They are. They are colorful. What's something else that we know, Amia? They can fly. Eden just said that too. What else do we know? How about the really obvious one? Ethan? Okay. They can mock you. They can mimic your words. Let's talk about the really, really obvious one. Abrielle? They're birds. Maybe some people don't know that. Parrots are birds. They're colorful. They can like mimic what you say. Um, they can definitely fly. Do we know anything about a bird's habitat, about what a bird eats? Mrs. Kneibold's not the most well-versed on birds. Anyone want to add to the story? Matthew. Okay, lettuce and worms. I would assume birds that eat lettuce are like domestic birds that you can feed lettuce to. Not like a regular old not regular old, but like a parrot in a country, it probably isn't going to be eating too much lettuce. Um, but I'm sure it eats worms or bugs, little gravelly thingies like that. Grubs, that's what I was saying, not gravel, grubs. Landon? They could, but if they are wild birds, there's not going to be bird seed around. Just out of a curiosity, do we think that the birds are alone? Lone flyers, or do we think they travel in packs? Mrs. Kneifel doesn't know. Anyone? Okay, Matthew thinks there's two. I mean, on our page, there's a bunch, but that could just be the illustration collage. Anyone else want to say? Matthew thinks two travel together. Do we think they're lone birds, or do we think they're pair birds? Do we think they're like a bunch together? Ethan, what do you think? So Mr. Ethan is making a text to text, well, a text to movie connection, thinking about a time that he's seen a bunch of birds being together. So Mrs. Kneifel does not know a ton about parrots. And I'm going to tell you, I don't really remember reading this story last year for whatever reason. Connor, I hope you're not already working on your homework, because if you are, I'm going to be really upset. Um, so Mrs. Kneifel does not necessarily remember reading this for some odd reason. Don't know why. But, um, I'll find a book up here. Uh, okay. Okay. So tomorrow we are going to read the story. Um, it is a lot of pages, but the pages are only have like a paragraph or two per page. So we should be able to get through the whole story tomorrow. On Wednesday, we're going to talk about plots. We're going to answer a lot of questions together. And then on Thursday, you're going to take the star test. So remember, you do not have to actually take a test over the story this week. That doesn't mean you can't pay attention to the story though. Now I need you all to go to your Google Classroom page and you need to go to the vocab homework. I'm going to read through it real quick. If you're at home, I'm going to try to get it to share on my computer. Might take a minute though. So Mrs. Kneipel was feeling fun and we're not doing vocabulary sentences. Instead, you're doing the vocabulary questions because Mrs. Kneipel has decided those are better for your brain and they really make you think. So Mrs. Kneipel is going to read through them. It's, the assignment should already be posted. It's under March 8th through 12th. It's called Vocabulary Assignment. It should say Module 5, Week 3, I believe. Sorry if you're at home. I'm trying to get my screen to share. It's moving slow. 
Okay, it says vocabulary homework. I don't know, whatever it says. I am giving you two days to do it though, fun fact. So it's being assigned now, but it is not due till the Wednesday at 8 a.m. So you have today, you have all day tomorrow and it's due Wednesday morning because Mrs. Kneifel is feeling nice. If you can hear my voice, put your hands on top of your head. Friends in class, we are talking much too much. All right, so I'm going to read through these questions real quick to make sure we all know what it says. So the directions say below are seven questions. Each question has one of this week's vocabulary words in it. Read the question. Think about the vo what the vocabulary word means to answer the question. Be sure to number your answers, okay? It is really hard if you make it into one giant paragraph. Put number one, answer. Number two, answer. Just number them, okay? Use capital letters. Use punctuation and restate your question. So question one, why do you think people first became interested in flight? Answer that. People may have become interested in flight because they saw birds flying, period. That could be an answer right there, okay? I don't care. Number two, would you rather toil physically or toil mentally? Why? So does that mean you rather, you know, push a bunch of bricks outside physically or you rather, you know, do a crossword puzzle mentally? Well, you're not telling me. Hey, shh, you're, you're answering that one. Number three, why might products travel on a merchant ship instead of an airplane? I already, kind of already answered that. Why are they going on a giant ship instead of in the air? Why do you think someone would build a fort? We kind of already answered that. What can you do to get someone's attention without jabbing them? So instead of poking at them, what can you do? Maybe, hey, hey, say their name. I don't know. Number six, what might be a purpose of keeping animals in captivity? And then number seven, what warning signs do you see when an animal is being aggressive? So that is seven questions. That means you're going to have at least seven capital letters, seven punctuation marks, and you're going to restate your question seven times. And it is due by Wednesday morning. So that is like almost, it's a little less than 48 hours, but this is Michael was hooking you up with extra time. Remember, this is our final reading assignment, technically, besides your reading RTI grades that still go in. So make sure you do your personal best on this. And tomorrow we will read our story. So when I get in class, make sure you are already on the story, okay? The rest of reading today, you can work 10 minutes. You can work on your homework, okay? Any questions? If not, you guys at home are free to go. You guys in class are free to work if there's no questions. So long, friends. Mm-hmm.